Hello everyone, and today we're going to dive into everything you need to know about comb jellies. As always, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on all the coolest ocean facts. What are tinafores, aka comb jellies, aka these weird transparent things on the screen right now? You have probably seen these if you like to snorkel or you go to the beach. Uh, you have probably seen these before. However, don't be fooled, these are not jellyfish. They are actually not related to cnidarians at all, and in fact, they do not sting either. There are about 200 species of comb jellies, and there are two classes within their phylum, Nuda and Tentaculata. Within the Nuda class, there are tinafores and comb jellies that do not have tentacles, and this is the class with the lesser amount of species. In the Tentaculata class, there are species with tentacles. However, these tentacles do not sting, as I just mentioned. Also, true jellyfish lack a complete gut, meaning that they do not have an anus or somewhere that excretes waste. Simply, they have to do it through their mouth. Tinafores or comb jellies, on the other hand, have a complete gut with a mouth and anal pores. The much larger class of Tentaculata possesses those species that have tentacles, and all species within the phylum Tinafora move around by beating their eight rows of cilia, also known as comb rows or teens, hence giving them the name that they have. These organisms have a very important role in the ecosystem as they are very important predators consuming zooplankton such as fish larvae or other jellies. The tinafores that have tentacles have sticky cells called coloblasts on them which can cause prey to get trapped in and the organism can then reel their food to their mouth. Some of these tentacles can be more than a hundred times the length of the body of the animal and the species that lack tentacles consume food simply wrap simply by rapidly opening their mouths to obtain food. These organisms are hard to study due to their fragile nature and sometimes shallow water species will bloom in large numbers and can completely decimate the plankton populations in areas which can wreak havoc on fisheries because they consume tons of fish larvae, causing the number of newly born fish being added to the ecosystem to be much, much lower. They are relatively abundant organisms in the deep sea, and some species such as this strange Venus's girdle are able to grow to six feet in length. These animals are almost always simultaneous hermaphrodites, meaning that they possess both male and female sex organs. Now let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of this organism before we wrap up the video. As you can see here, the organism has a clear mouth and anal pores showing that there is a complete digestive tract and the tentacles of the organism fit into these tentacle sheaths which can hold the entirety of the tentacle, especially when they have trapped a prey item that is at the end of a tentacle. It can reel that tentacle all the way up to the mouth for the organism to easily feed on it. I hope you all enjoyed learning about tinafores and before I sign off for the day, I want you guys to do something for me really quickly. I have started a TikTok channel, a uh, TikTok account, not channel. I forgot, not everything's YouTube. I have started a TikTok account and I want you guys to follow that as well as my new Instagram account. I want to help you guys learn as much about the ocean as possible and I want to be much more active than I have been in the past. So if you guys could go in the description and find those accounts, click on the links in the description and follow those accounts, I would very much appreciate it. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day.